Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout, no matter how much you order. Skim coating curved walls with knockdown texture. This is what most people in Florida are dealing with. Trying to hang the latest and the greatest wall coverings over this. You don't want to hang anything on this. Knockdown texture is an enemy to wallpaper. Any texture is an enemy to peel and stick. So how you go about removing this is important when you consider how much time you might waste if you approach this incorrectly. You wouldn't want to start with too wide of a taping knife or trowel because you have this curvature to deal with. Secondly, you wouldn't want to apply your skim coat vertically. You want to go according to the contour of the wall like this. You can see that that top part is applied according to the curve. If I were to go up and down, I would have tremendous lap marks on this curve, particularly if I used a really wide blade because we need to anticipate the angular change every several inches. And so common sense dictates that you would go sideways. Let me show you what I mean. Using an 8-inch knife, sideways. If I were to go up and down, take a look at the lap marks that I would make by doing that. Those are pretty thick. So you wouldn't want to go vertically when you're skim coating a curved wall, whether it be an inner curve or an outer curve like this. A convex wall has its particular challenges. The smaller the knife you use, the better able you are to address vertical issues that need to be compounded over, such as this. You see these lines here? So you, would, you wouldn't come to this area and use a 12 inch knife to drag down and fill in. Because the curvature, the convex curve would cause, let me show you with the blade. If I were to address these vertical valleys. If I use a wide blade, wouldn't you agree that the wider you use, it doesn't seem to get around the curve, right? Look over here. So you wouldn't want to use a wide blade, but we know from this video that doing a convex wall 
or a concave wall, which is the other side of this wall, right? We know that it's going to take more time and therefore cost more money, right? And so the way you would skim coat this wall is to simply go this way. Because look, we have full use of our blade, no matter how wide we use, right? We can use a 14 inch blade here, there's no issues, right? But as soon as we do this, we have a space here and we got a space there. So you would use a smaller one. And for little issues, like this one, look, we got the whole blade on this thing. This is only a four inch blade. Or we can go to our eight inch blade. If you wanna make your wall perfect, you have to know the mechanics. And then use your skill to the best of your ability. The dog at my job likes the drop cloth. Hello, buddy. Sit. Oh, nice boy. Give me paw. Oh my gosh. Give me paw. Can I have your paw? Oh man, what do you think? He doesn't look too friendly, right? Come on, baby. Shh. Give me paw. Okay, he just wants to do business. He's so cute. You know, I don't want to get rid of him. <laughs> you know what, too? He's tracking, he's tracking my, my uh, debris around. And so I like him. You know, I like him. And anybody who's a contractor would know why. And I'll leave you guys to figure that out. But the contractors know why. I'll give you a hint. Instead of blaming me, we can blame the doggy. Thank you. He's too cute. But I don't want to throw him out of here. So there is our, our wall, right? Our radial wall. But now you're a contractor. You want to step up your game, right? How does the wall look? This is Natural light, it's daytime. Let's put it to the real test. Get yourself an LED light. Let's reveal the wall as it is. Okay. See, without light, it doesn't look too bad. But once you put the light on it, you see the need for furthering the smoothing out of this wall. I have a Planex, a Planex, Festool Planex in round. Believe it or not, you can't even get them as of August 2021. You can't get them quickly. They're all on back order. Earliest you can get them into the continental USA. Earliest you can get them into the continental USA is actually October. But to make this job easier, sometimes I have recourse to uh, 220 grit sanding discs. So if you want to step up your game, I got these from Lowe's Home Goods. Um, they charge right into most vehicles today if you, if you have that. And um, they're very helpful. And how long do you need them? I mean, the light's not going to go out beyond my need. So I strongly recommend that you get a, a light that doesn't have an electric cord attached to it, tethering you to a certain distance. So we're going to perfect this and then we're going to hang our paper.
This is after three coats. Right now, you're just seeing shadows of dry and wet. Wet. But that's the finished product right there. Now, I have not sanded this, and I'm not going to. That's just wet. That is not like sticking out, okay? So, what do you think? If you use the right taping knife and you use the right moisture proportion in your compound, you can do this. You can do it. We're almost ready to hang the paper. We have to seal this with guards, put our dryer, fan dryer on it, and we'll be ready to go. So, again, always with murals, you have to see if you have an overlap or if it's a butt-to-butt -butt joint. What would you say about this? What do you think? To the left is panel four. To the right is panel five. Do we have a butt joint or an overlap? Well, as you can see, this is exactly a butt joint. Let me show you closer. You can see right up here. See those two pieces? They meet. They do not overlap. You can tell that is much different than that. So we have a butt joint. You want to establish that. If you don't have directions, you want to figure this out yourself. Because now we have a true measurement meaning that each piece being 42 inches wide is exactly the space we're going to need times six. It's not an overlap where we're losing an inch or a half an inch.
when you're smoothing out on a convex or concave wall, you want to go sideways, not up and down. So when you're cutting concave or convex, you want to take short strides with your blade to give your blade and your hand time to adjust to the curve. If you go too fast, your cut will not be level. Take your time and you'll get a beautiful finish. And your strip will come off just like that. When you're trimming at the top or on the bottom, on a concave or convex wall, you want to go in short spurts. The reason is because if you go in long spurts, you're going to wind up trimming too much wallpaper off. My smoother there in my right hand, you see that, that white thing? That's too long. It's not conforming to the curve. So I really have to drag my blade right along the end or the beginning of my smoother. If I don't, I'm going to cut off too much.
in my opinion, the perfect mural that you can get is one with a matte finish. Let's face it, not everyone is going to offer you the smooth walls that I produce. Not everybody has the skill to do it or the desire to spend the time that it takes to do it. And so if you want your mural to look perfect, even if it's not, why not get a mural that
Now with the light. It's too late to fix any of your mistakes. But I'm just showing you the perfection of the work. Try to concentrate on the dark colors. That's where my skim coat will show you perfection. Perfection. Look at that. Look at that beauty. If you're a do-it-yourselfer and you want to just check out your work for the how you did on the first go-round, wait till night, turn off all the lights in your room, and get this flashlight out. And you will see. You see how you can't see anything really behind this light color? At night you will. You'll see everything. This is a beautiful product. And it's a beautiful job. It's a beautiful product, Komar. I highly, highly recommend Komar wall murals. They don't pay me. They don't even know me. This is the second one I've installed. And you know what I love about it the most? It's a matte finish. Look at that. Look at that. Some people might call that a satin finish, but I had my hands on it. I would call this a matte finish. You want a wool mural to look perfect? You see, I had to make the walls perfect. I had to put three coats of compound. But if you have imperfections on your wall, don't get a shiny wallpaper. Get matte.